What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonas. This is episode 118, and today's a bit of a special episode. Uh, we're going to be looking at WrestleMania 36. This is our special preview prediction show, and uh, we've got a special guest via Skype that's going to be talking us through all 16 matches that have been announced for WrestleMania 36. And it's going to be a, a bit of a predictions or preview show like no other that we've done on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. Uh, um, yes, like I can say, on paper, it looks like an ordinary wrestling an event but as you and i know uh, the world is in a little bit of a turmoil uh, everything's been turned upside down and uh, we will talk about the wrestling business and wrestlemania in particular very very soon in terms of the things that have changed and that's had to happen um in order to get wrestlemania on our screens um so I want to introduce our special guest. Uh, she has been on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast uh, not too long ago, once before. I think it was uh, around about episode uh, 113 or 14. I, I can't remember, but it was a few weeks ago. And I want to welcome back to the Wrestling with Jonas podcast, Lexi Howell. So Lexi, great to have you back on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. And uh, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for inviting me back. Um, yeah, um, it's, yeah, I'm thrilled to be back. So thank you so much. Um, and it just, yeah, what a crazy, crazy time we're in. Um, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the last time we spoke, um, I think that obviously the coronavirus was spreading its way across the globe and we was hearing more and more about it on the news. But this was about three, I don't think it was as many weeks ago as that, but maybe maybe three weeks ago, no more, uh, we were talking uh, on an episode of the podcast and um, there was a lot of conversation on the podcast, a lot of conversation amongst the, the wrestling community about WrestleMania and what would happen to it. And, uh, you know, I don't think they had formally announced that it had been uh, switched to two days at that point. There was a lot of speculation that it was going to be cancelled altogether. Um, yeah. I think that one of our listeners or uh, uh, social media friends kind of sent us a question saying, well, will it be hosted in the Performance Centre? And we kind of spoke about that. And I thought that was a, a ludicrous idea at the time. But then a few days later, that's what we kind of had landed on our doorstep was a two day WrestleMania um, being hosted you know, from multiple locations. One of those locations uh, was the Performance Centre, to the best of our knowledge. But um Let's have a quick look at what we actually know uh, about what's going to be happening with, with, with WrestleMania 36. So we know that it's going to be hosted over two days. Uh, that's Saturday the 4th and Sunday the 5th of April. So uh, as we're recording this, we are uh, just a little bit more than 24 hours away from night one or day one of WrestleMania on Saturday the 4th of April. Um, so, uh, But both days have been recorded already. So both days have been pre-recorded. They were recorded from multiple locations, from the Full Sail Arena, from the Performance Centre, from various uh, off-site locations um, and they were recorded last Wednesday and Thursday so WrestleMania is in the can um, we just wait to see kind of what it looks like on the days itself uh, we know for sure uh, sorry, we don't know for sure uh, which matches will take place on which days. Now, there was um, something that went out on social media a week or so ago, but uh, I think that might have been from an official WWE source. But uh, since then, I don't know, things have changed, but we don't really know for sure which matches are going to take place on which days. Um, as we mentioned, some of the matches were filmed on location. So, uh, Lexi, we, we were talking off air about, about some of this. Of course, you've got uh, The Fiend versus John Cena that was going to be filmed in some kind of studio setup. Uh, made out to be the Firefly Funhouse and of course you've got the Boneyard match between AJ Styles and The Undertaker and possibly yeah. um, an off-site match with Edge versus Randy Orton so that could be quite interesting um, what else do we know so we know that Roman Reigns won't be involved in Wrestlemania now this is a bit of a uh, bit of a I don't know internet legend really I suppose as to why he didn't uh, take part in his match against Goldberg for the Universal Championship. Now, by all accounts, it was something to do with the Miz turning up at these recordings for WrestleMania with with with, with a, quite a heavy cold and a temperature he yeah. shouldn't have been there. The Usos, who are, of course, cousins with Roman Reigns, got upset by this. Roman Reigns uh, got upset because the Usos were upset about the situation, of course, uh, with Roman Reigns having twice recovered um, or from leukemia. He's got, uh, you know, a compromised immune system. And of yeah. course, he would be more vulnerable than most other people if he were to catch coronavirus, COVID-19. Yeah. So he decided not to be a part of the show. We do know, however, or, well, we don't know for certain, but the, the common consensus is that 
Braun Strowman is going to be Roman Reigns' replacement, to the best of our knowledge. Uh, We also know that there will be no battle rules at this year's WrestleMania. None have been announced. And of course, previous years, we've had a women's battle royal and a men's battle royal, the Andre the Giant battle royal. And of course, that would mean getting 30 wrestlers in the ring at the same time, uh, which, uh, of course, I don't think many of these uh, locations can handle any more than maybe 40 or 50 people in the building at any one time so that would kind of uh, blow that out of the water uh what else do we know what else do we know wrestlers that uh, were due to be part of wrestlemania but aren't uh, dana yeah. brooke i understand withdrew because of coronavirus uh yeah. the miz i'm not sure if he actually took part but i think he possibly got withdrew from his match um andrade because of an injury um yeah. and that's pretty much all we know apart from roman reigns but as um any, any, anything else you all sorry go ahead lexi sorry as far as i know ray mysterio is also quarantined ah, um and as well even though he's going to be on the card by reports daniel bryan has gone into self-isolation. Um, right. it, it came out earlier this week. His wife uh, on the Bella podcast um, basically said that he has an autoimmune disease and has a, you know, as a result, he's got to go into quarantine and obviously she's pregnant as well and they've got a young kid. Um, so, yeah, um, mm. that's as far as I know. And also as well, a little bit of... Uh, information for you uh the aj styles undertaker match um wwe have been very very cautious about how they've named this match and that's why it's called a boneyard match they've called it a boneyard match because it sounds less morbid than a buried alive match which is what it essentially is yeah to my understanding anyway and it could possibly be the reason why we had a return of the american badass character um so yeah that's what i know i could be wrong i'm sure people yeah. will correct me if i'm wrong but you no know, I, yeah. I think you're right yeah and i i i mean a buried alive match or graveyard match it just is not very appropriate in today's yeah. setting to be honest with you so uh, i can understand and wanted to be a little bit careful with their wording there uh the other thing we know is of course there's gonna be no fans at any of these locations so uh you know i i I don't know. I'm not. I'm not aware of any spoilers from any of these matches, which is a good thing. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear yep. any results or any spoilers at all before viewing it myself on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and as far as I'm aware, I mean, the lineup that we're going to talk through is pretty accurate um, based on kind of everything we're privy to at the moment. But um, I have to ask you before we start running through the card, then, Lexi. Yep. You know, we, we, we are what, one, two days away from WrestleMania. Um, where's your excitement level? Are you looking forward to it? Have you been getting more and more excited as the week progresses? Because, of course, you, you go onto any Facebook group, you go onto the Wrestling Majolas Facebook group, and it's nothing but WrestleMania posts and trying to get yeah. people excited and looking forward to the event. Although we know it's not going to be the same as any WrestleMania we've ever seen before. No fans in the arena. Uh, so where's your excitement level at the moment? Um. <sighs> Do you know what? I'm not as excited about this WrestleMania. And I think it's because NXT was taken from us. Yeah. And I completely understand why. And I know that we've we've either had or will be getting the scheduled matches for the NXT TakeOver card. But for me, that was always the, the highlight. Um. I also think as well the way that it's being promoted. I haven't seen a lot of uh, promotion by WWE themselves. I've only seen one or two adverts either on YouTube or social media. Um, and it it does seem very scaled back. So it, it's kind of like a, a sombre uh, or sombre affair, to be honest. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I'm so thankful we have it because it provides a distraction um and it gives me something to watch on you know sunday when i could be watching football but there we go um but yeah i mean it's it's exciting in a way because there's no possibility of or there's very little possibility of spoilers being leaked prior to things starting but i don't know um I wish that I could be more hyped for it and go, yes, we finally got a two day WrestleMania. That means we'll be able to, you know, get involved and, and stuff. And I don't know. Yeah. Um, 
I, I know where you're coming from. I know where yeah. you're coming from. And yeah. uh, it is a bit of a strange feeling, isn't it? And hopefully by the end of this podcast, we'll both be a little bit more excited, looking forward to it, having kind of uh, spoken about the matches that we're looking forward to over yeah. the next few days. But uh, that's the plan. And hopefully we can get our listeners more excited because I think you're not the yes. only one. A lot of people are in the same boat at the moment, uh, feeling a little bit, um, a little bit kind of unenthused by WrestleMania 36. So, Lexi, before we uh, head into the, the matches at WrestleMania 36, then, um, I just want to kind of let my listeners know uh, what, what we've been kind of doing on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast over the last week or so. And it's, a lot of it is WrestleMania themes. So uh, if, you, if you want to get even more hyped about WrestleMania 36, go out and check our WrestleMania 8 uh, kind of look back uh, review, our uh, kind of retro pay-per-view review that we did for, with uh, Chris and Nick from the Broken But Glorious Wrestling podcast uh, a couple of episodes ago. And that was a really, really fun listen. And uh, of course, this episode with uh, with Lexi, our uh, WrestleMania preview predictions episode is day three of five. We're dropping five podcasts in five days. Uh, and of course, day one, we had another retro pay-per-view review. Uh, WrestleMania 9, we covered with uh, with Mike, Mad Dog, Angus, uh, TNT Extreme Wrestling Ring Announcer. And he helped us with that uh, review. Really, really good. Go and check that out. That's day one of five. Day two of five uh, dropped uh, not too long ago. And it was a special WrestleMania edition of the two-minute Brain Buster quiz with a good friend of the show, Mags, who runs uh, the Badlands podcast and Wally Watch and Five Rounds. Um, he has Mags three pods. But uh, that was a really, really fun episode. And uh, give that a listen to see where Mags ended up on our uh, kind of growing leaderboard and to see whether he's able to knock Grizz off of the top. And then, of course, today, uh, day three or five uh, of five days, five podcasts with Lexi Helms, of course. So, Lexi, let's start having a look at some of the matches. And it is quite a big card. Um, and to be honest with you, even when WrestleMania is usually on one day, you know, even it, this would be a big card for any normal WrestleMania. So I'm kind of glad that it's been split up into two days. Um, yeah. Now, from my understanding, there will be an hour's pre-show before each of the main shows kick in. And I think they start at midnight our time in the UK, 7 p.m. over on the East Coast of America. Um, and I think from... Uh, 6 p.m. on the East Coast and 11 p.m. our time. There will be a one-hour kickoff on both days, both Saturday and Sunday. So some of these matches we talk about might be slotted into the pre-show. We don't know, or whether they'll just use those hours just as a, a bit of a last-minute hype up. Um, but um, so the first match I want to talk about. Now, this match has been kind of tugging at my heartstrings for weeks, if not months now. Uh, and it's going to be Otis versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a standard singles match Mandy yes. Rose is going to be out there. Of course, we've all fallen for Otis Dozovic. He's, he's a right sweetheart, but he's a big guy. And he, he, he's really a wonderful character wrestler. But um, I think he's a, he's a proper baby face character. And, um, you know, obviously he fell in love with Mandy Rose. He's uh, given all sorts of presents like uh, hams and uh, various uh, uh, bits of meat to try to woo her and get her attention. And then yeah. uh, he, he manages to kind of sort out a, a Valentine's date and uh, he, he, he kind of uh, is late for the date. And by the time he gets to the restaurant, Dolph Ziggler, the slimy son of a gun, is already sitting there with Mandy Rose at the table, uh, essentially stealing Otis's girl. So uh, it's been a great story. And to be honest with you, when you look at all the kind of the big Builds to the matches that we're going to be talking about. This is one of the more interesting and fun storyline builds, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'm looking forward to this one because I want to see Otis get a little bit of comeuppance and get a little bit of revenge, to be honest with you. And I think that Dolph Ziggler is the perfect opponent. He's going to bounce all over the ring for Otis. And yeah. uh, I think, you know, we are going to see Otis um, very vulnerable during this match as well, especially with Mandy on the outside. Um, yeah. But uh, where, where's your kind of mind at? Where's your heart at when it comes to Otis versus Dolph Ziggler? And will Mandy play a part in the finish, maybe? Um, I'm hoping Mandy plays a part in the finish because it would be a nice way to sort of round off the, the feud if this is going to be the end match. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I wrote a couple of thoughts down about it. Um, I think this is one of the ones that could go on to the pre-shows. Um, uh, I feel that that Dolph could win by shenanigans, although I'm hoping that they pull a little bait and switch and they have Mandy Rose causing the distraction to make Otis get the win. Um, but. I can't help but think, and this is no disrespect to Otis, but 
Dolph deserves better. He has been an absolute workhorse for the company, and I think he deserves better than what he's getting at the moment. Um, so I, I think, I hope that Otis gets his comeuppance, and you know he run will, you know carries Mandy off into the sunset. Um, you know, potentially giving Corey Graves some sort of mild aneurysm in, you know, uh, <laughs> on commentary. Um, but yeah, um, I'm I'm kind of either way I can see it playing out, and either way I'm happy with the result. You know, if Otis gets the girl, it's it's a lovely WrestleMania moment. Well done, that feud's ended. See you later. And if Dolph gets the girl, and you know things fall apart yeah. then he gets his comeuppance so yeah well my personal feelings is I, I i i understand what you're saying regarding Dolph. i think he's he's been the workhorse of the company for well over 10 years now and uh, i do think he's tremendous talent uh, but i think his position in the company needs to be kind of helping individuals like otis and helping some of the new stars and uh, i like the tag team heavy machinery so uh, yes. i don't want otis to split up uh, from uh, from tucker uh, anytime yes. soon i want them to carry on i think they've got uh, a bright future as a tag team ahead of them and, and let's be honest i think if otis splits up from tucker that could be the end of tucker dare i say it because otis this is the real star of the tag team so i want them to kind of remain yeah. as a tag team for a while uh, yeah. but um i don't know i think i've got a, a, I, I, my heart says otis i want otis to win um but my head says dolph ziggler because i think that this is probably a story that's going to continue um yeah. and um, i think that otis is probably going to get one more heartbreak with a loss at wrestlemania um only to possibly get his Revenge or comeuppance um, against uh, against either Dolph or maybe Dolph and uh, Bobby Roode in a tag match, maybe for a SummerSlam when we got uh, fans in the arena that can appreciate uh, the, the kind of the, the, the you know the, the culmination of this storyline and this cold culmination of the feud. But um, yeah. and uh, I, I don't know, but yeah, I've got a funny feeling, and I'm gonna. I'm going to jump off the fence here and say Dolph Ziggler is going to win this one because I think there will be some shenanigans. I think Mandy Rose is going to get involved and I think that could lead to Otis or lose in the match. But uh, who, who are you going with your, your winner in this one? I'm going to say Ziggler. Um, and I'm going to say it's by shenanigans. I'm not yeah. sure whether it's going to be Mandy or Bobby because um, I'd love to see Bobby Roode at WrestleMania. Um, yeah. But yeah, I I think it's going to go that way. Um, but if mm. we're wrong, nice surprise. Yeah, yeah, we shall see. We shall see. I think that they've got, um, you know, they've got a really good storyline here. So I think it's going to kind of they're going to drag this storyline out for as long as they possibly can, uh, because it's not reached its culmination yet. It's not reached its natural ending as far as I'm concerned. So I think the only way they can continue it is by having Otis lose, uh, Dolph to go over. And I think they'll kind of draw it out for at least one more pay-per-view uh, whenever that might yeah. be. So uh, that's going to be a really good. F but that's, 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 that's one of the matches you know, that I'm looking forward to, mainly because it's had a really good storyline behind it, to be honest with you, which the same can't be said for a lot of the matches we're going to talk about, which haven't had much of a storyline build at all, but that one definitely has. Uh, yeah. The next match we're going to talk about, Lexi, uh, it's actually a title match, and it's going to be for the Women's Tag Team Championships. You've got the, the current champions, the Kabuki Warriors, and let's be honest, they, they've held on to the belts for quite a while now. Uh, yeah. Asuka and Kairi Sane going up against Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. So there were rumours that this was going to be a multi-team match, possibly involving Natalia and Beth Phoenix, and that hasn't happened. Of course, yeah. Beth Phoenix has played a little bit of a role in the storyline uh, regarding her husband, Edge, in his feud with Randy Orton. But as it turns out, you've just got uh, Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross, uh, they're, they're a fairly established tag team in the, the kind of women's tag team scene. They've uh, been together for quite a while now. I want to say about a year um, going up against the Kabuki Warriors. So you've got four, you know, fairly good wrestlers in there. Um, and uh, I like the, the combination of Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I think they gel together. I like their kind of friendship and what they portray on the TV. Big fans of the Kabuki Warriors. Um, I like Kyrie Sane, like Asuka. I like their heel persona as well. Um, yeah. Definitely doing the business as far as that's concerned. Um, I, I think if I were to pick a winner on this one, Oh, personally, from, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to see the Kabuki Warriors retain, to be honest with you. I think that they definitely deserve it. Um, and I think Asuka 
I don't know if she's actually had a, a victory or a win at WrestleMania. Of course, she lost two years ago uh, yeah. in New Orleans against Charlotte Flair. I think she mm-hmm. might have been in the Women's Battle Royal last year. I don't think it was anything special that she was involved in. So this year, I'd like to see her get a WrestleMania win with Kyrie Sane. And if you think about it, the original theme of WrestleMania 36 was the kind of the, the pirate theme, the pirate ship that was going to be on the, the yeah. top of the stadium and everything. So it would have been an awesome uh experience and an entrance for Kyrie Sane um but uh, I'd yeah. like to see her pick up the win as well but uh, where's your where's your your thoughts regarding this women's tag title match lane at the moment then Lexi um I'm the opposite I am big fans of both teams um but for me I think that if Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross win it can allow that that feud to continue um you know, and possibly get higher stakes than just the tag titles. So it could be that there's some sort of um, ladder match or something to to really sort of solidify both teams as, you know, the fantastic performers that they are. Yeah. Um, because the question is, if the Kabuki Warriors win... Who's going to be the people to take the title from them? Yeah, true. You know, so just thinking sort of longer and also thinking about the the other responses I've got to the matches, I do think that we could see a title change in that match. Yeah, yeah, you, you've got a good point. You really do. I mean, as far as future contenders, if uh, the Kabuki Warriors were to keep on to the uh, hold on to the titles, you could see them potentially, dare I say it, you know, uh, have a SummerSlam match with Natalia and Beth Phoenix. I mean, they're mm. fairly established as best friends um, and they have had uh, kind of tag matches together before. So they could be looking further down the road and thinking, well, yes, we've got Natalia and Beth Phoenix. Let's, let's not you know, waste them at WrestleMania. Let's have them in front of a crowd to win the championships at SummerSlam. But I also um, kind of agree with you as well. And I think that... Uh, if there were going to be any championship, any title changes happening this weekend at WrestleMania, it could very well be the women's tag title match. And like you say, Alexa Bliss and, and Nikki Cross, they're an established duo. They are over as an act. Um, the Kabuki Warriors have held the title for quite a while now, so maybe maybe it's time for a title change. But uh, that's yeah. going to be a really interesting one. So, um, so you're going for Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Am I right in thinking that? Yeah. Yeah. OK, OK. Um, and uh, I'm going to go for the Kabuki Warriors there. So we'll see. Uh, but that's more for selfish reasons, because I think, you know, I, I think they deserve the WrestleMania moments. But uh, yeah. uh, let, let's talk about uh, another championship match. Now, this is one match that I am particularly looking forward to. Now, you did say at the top of the show that this match could change where we see it on our TV screens uh, because of a concern that his wife has about his health issues and that's of course Daniel Bryan going up against Sami Zayn so it's still advertised as that so yeah. uh, I'm kind of we've got to kind of assume until we know for definite otherwise that it's not going ahead now um, I mean you mentioned some medical concerns that Brie has about her husband from her podcast now I didn't yeah. hear that but I know that Daniel Bryan um, I think he's either asthmatic or, or something like that yeah, um, and of course yeah. asthmatics uh, are, are a little bit more um susceptible to having um contracting COVID-19 of course so that could very well be the reason I, I did know that it, it, he was questionable and they, it was 50 50 as to whether he would actually be uh wrestling at WrestleMania but I have heard because uh, I do listen to the Dave Meltzer podcast and he seems to kind of have his fingers in all the pies as far as internet uh, rumors yeah. are concerned but uh, he said that Daniel Bryan did wrestle at the event or certainly according to his source anyway uh um, but uh, nevertheless, let, let's pretend that this match does go ahead because I think this could be a real corker of a match, to be honest with you. And of course, you know, massive yeah. fans of uh, Sami Zayn on this podcast, massive fans of Daniel Bryan. Bit of a dream yeah. match to see them kind of go at it because, of course, especially fans of American indie wrestling would know them from their Ring of Honor days and their PWG days and things like that. But uh, two kind of traditionally amazing technical wrestlers. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it could be akin to Sammy's match with Nakamura four years ago in Texas, um, or Dallas, sorry. Um, but um, I'm really, really looking forward to 
to this one. But uh, yeah. uh, what, what about yourself? We're, we're expecting Shinsuke Nakamura to accompany Sami Zayn to the ring, quite possibly, and Drew Gulak to accompany Daniel Bryan. So there, there could be mm-hmm. some outside stuff going on there as well. But uh, I yeah. wouldn't mind. I'm a big fan of all four of these. They can they can certainly yeah. go. Um, I, I probably wouldn't have minded a tag match, to be honest with you, to get to even more talent on the card in the ring. Yeah. But um, where, where's your kind of head and your heart regarding this one? Um one of the first things I wrote down about this match was it's going to be one hell of a match. Oh, yeah. Um, I, my heart aches because I'm a huge fan of Nakamura. And as much as I love Sami Zayn and Cesaro, it should always be Nakamura any day of the week as the champion. But it, it is what it is. Um, I think... Sami Zayn will retain and I thought that irrespective of the rumours surrounding Daniel Bryan um, and I think it could build and I think what they could do is they could lead into the rematch from Dallas from four years ago um, with Nakamura versus Zayn on the main roster Um, they've got quite a while to build it as well Um, so have you know shenanigans again um and then eventually uh it lead up but yeah i really 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 cannot wait to see this match it's one of the ones i am so looking forward to um like yourself i would have taken a tag team or even a six-man tag if you would put somebody else with brian and gulak um but with the ic tight uh, sorry with the US title not being defended, um, which is Raw's main uh, secondary title. Yeah, I think they had to have the IC title on the card. Um, you know, so it works. I think it's going to be a crowd pleaser. Ironic, um, but yeah, I'm just looking forward to what we're going to get. I, I tell you what, can I confess something here, Lexi? I can't even remember who the United States champion is at the moment. Andrade. Of course it is. But he's been on and off telly uh, an awful lot lately, hasn't he? He's currently off with, with his uh, injury that he sustained yeah. a, a week or so ago, which is why he's been replaced um, in, in the match that we'll talk about very, very soon. But uh, honestly, I couldn't remember. And, and that just kind of <laughs> it, it, it kind of demonstrates how unimportant some of these secondary titles are and and you know uh, in the same breath some of the world titles are kind of not um uh, represented very well on their tv shows but yeah uh, I, I completely had a brain fart there i couldn't remember who the u.s champion was but that probably goes a long way to explaining uh why some of these secondary titles just aren't treated as important as they deserve to be or as they used to be anyway but um where where are you where's your um your your kind of winner's hat going to be thrown here towards Daniel Bryan or towards Sami Zayn then? I think it's going to be Sami Zayn. Um, I think they, you know, the company are really sort of playing up to the heel champions at the moment. Yeah. Um, And I I do, I do think um, a title with the history that the IC title has, I think if it's going to be dropped, I think WWE would prefer to have it dropped in front of a crowd rather than an empty arena. Um, That's just what my gut tells me. My head screaming and going, no, no, (laughs) they they could still pull a swerve on us. But um, yeah. So yeah. that's where yeah. Sunday. I'm inclined to agree. I'm inclined to agree. And I think when you look at the talent, and I failed to mention Cesaro, but you did mention Cesaro could be out there. He's part of that wonderful kind of collective threesome at the moment with Zayn and uh, Nakamura, of course. And uh, I think that there's that this kind of feud between these five, if you include Drew, Drew Gulak as well, has a, a lot of legs um, and uh, could really kind of be played out for a bit longer. And I, I've got to say, um, the biggest positive to to all of this is Sami Zayn. I think his, his character development is fantastic. I think he's, he's really, really... I mean, I, I couldn't believe when he won the IC title that, that was his first yeah. championship on the main roster uh, when yeah. you kind of, you know, take to one side his NXT championship, which was absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. But... Um, yeah, and I think Sami Zayn as that kind of comedy heel character at the moment, he's playing it to a T. And he's always been great with his character. He's always been great as a heel. Um, but uh, and 
when he gets a chance to perform in the ring, he really does turn it on as well. So I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to this. But I'm going to go for Sami Zayn. I think that'd be great for him to have a WrestleMania win over Daniel Bryan. I don't think it will hurt Daniel Bryan much either because I think whatever happens to Daniel Bryan, whether he wins matches or loses matches, I don't think uh, you know it will affect Daniel Bryan. He'll always bounce back, um, mm-hmm. you know, just as strong as before. So I don't think it affects. Don't, I don't think the, the loss will affect Daniel Bryan at all. But it will certainly uh, kind of help and aid Sami Zayn in uh, becoming more of a legend than he already is. So, yeah. right there, Lexi. So, the next match, um, I don't think it's the match that many people are looking forward to. It's certainly not high on their list of matches that they're going to be kind of staying awake for over here in the wee hours of the morning in the UK, but it's King Corbin versus Elias. So, I'm sorry to have to do this to you, but it is probably the dullest match on the WrestleMania card. I, I don't know. I could be offending you. You could be the biggest fan of Elias or the biggest fan of King Corbin. Uh, but I, I can understand why they put these two together. Two fairly kind of um, upper mid card wrestlers. I suppose Elias is probably underneath King Corbin in the ranking of things but to, an opportunity to get some fresher talent over i suppose you've got quite a lot of veterans coming back for this year WrestleMania, like you do with a lot of manias but um you know it's going to be unique and fairly fresh i suppose at least it's not king corbin versus roman reigns for the 4000th time uh, but <laughs> elias versus king corbin we saw the bump that uh, Elias took off the stage uh but full sale last week's smackdown that was pretty good it helps to set up the story, of course. Um, but, uh, oh, crikey, King Corbin versus Elias. I, I think if one match needed a gimmick uh, to kind of give this a little bit of a little bit of life to kickstart it um, yeah. a little bit, I would say this match definitely needed a gimmick. But it is just a singles match. So maybe they got some tricks up their sleeve. I don't know. Um, I am, like I say, intrigued to a certain degree because it's too fairly fresh wrestlers that we haven't seen an awful lot of over the years on WrestleManias. I know they've teased Elias with a bit of a mini feud backwards and forwards with John Cena over the last couple of years. Um, yep. But uh, at least this one, this match gives these two a bit more of an exposure without a legends um, or a part time of being involved. But uh, what say you then, Lexi? Um, do you know what? Now that you've said that, I'm thinking actually, yeah, to be perfectly honest with you, I wrote three words down for this match. And they are piss break match. <laughs> yeah, I was Genuinely. thinking the same. <laughs> um, I I couldn't care less to be honest with you, and that's no disrespect to them. I miss. I really enjoy Elias's character. I really, really do, and I love the fact that he comes out and he yeah. plays his guitar and he sings and stuff. But I miss the NXT version of Baron Corbin. Um, yeah. I just I just the find him. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if it was NXT Corbin, yeah, be down for it, but no, I couldn't care less. If it goes to a, yeah. a double count out, great, carry on, you know, um, that will probably be the time if I'm up awake where I'm refilling snacks and stuff, so, um, yeah. Exactly. This will be the time to be, uh, getting your pizza out the oven and uh and getting getting some more snacks ready but um yeah carry on yeah hopefully as well that goes on to the pre-show um to warm the viewers up um because that's the only place that i can see it i mean looking at the other car like the other matches on the card i would be absolutely fuming if that got onto the main card of either night uh, one one thing I will say is I think they dropped the ball with Elias a couple of years back. Now, I've, I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned to anybody in, the, in this uh, podcast, but I, I went to WrestleMania a couple of years ago. I was in New Orleans. I don't know if I've mentioned it before, maybe once or twice. Uh, <laughs> but um, a couple of years ago, 2018, New Orleans, Elias was massively over. Everybody, you know, especially down Bourbon Street, Bourbon Street, whatever you want to call it, um, was was singing let's walk with Elias the Monday night roar after nice. WrestleMania everybody was going walk with Elias and years ago when he was white hot and I can't kind of think of any more than maybe one or two matches that I've actually seen of Elias's um kind of on the main roster it's been more of a novelty act strumming his guitar but I can't really think of many matches he's actually had so I think it would be nice to see him actually in the ring um performing yeah. as a wrestler um so um who, who are you going to go with in, in this match then i've kind of got an inkling as far as where i'm going but what about yourself i'm hoping it goes to elias um just because i prefer them out of the two um but knowing wwe they'll book corbin um 
without a shadow of a doubt. So I'm actually going to say Baron Corbin to win. Yeah, and you have to remember that it was only 12 months ago that they had uh, Baron Corbin. I don't think he was King Corbin then, but uh, Baron Corbin, he uh, defeated Kurt Angle in that uh, retirement match that nobody wanted. Um, and, yeah. uh, wow, that that's just made me really sad. I completely forgot about that. So that we can kind of recap who you're going with between those yep. two, Elias and King Corbin. Uh, I'm going to say Corbin, um, just yep. because of previous experience with him. Um, it seems that backstage people are quite, um, they quite like him. Um, and yeah, I, yeah. I'm just going to say Corbin. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, they, they do like him. Um, like I say, they gave him enough matches with their biggest babyface, Roman Reigns, to demonstrate that. And of course, um, as, as we mentioned kind of a little bit earlier on, Baron Corbin, King Corbin, he was only Baron Corbin at the time. He was the one to retire yeah. Kurt Angle at Larches WrestleMania. He, you know, if that was Kurt Angle's last match, whether it was the match we wanted or didn't want, um, I think we would have settled for John Cena 12 months ago to uh, retire. Or to have uh, Kurt Angle's retirement match, but as it was, it was King Corbin. So let's skip ahead there. Um, Alistair Black versus Bobby Lashley. Now, um, I kind of heard through the various dirt sheets and websites that Bobby Lashley has been affected by the coronavirus as well. I understand that he even self-quarantined for about a week uh, but he was kind of recovered fit and healthy to do the recording so as far as I'm aware this match did go ahead um, I've been assured by uh, Mr Meltzer once again that Alistair Black did have a match at Wrestlemania and that it was against Bobby Lashley um, so this one quite interesting I'm pleased for Alistair Black because it gives him yeah. an opportunity to be on a Wrestlemania card in a singles match and as we've seen um, from Alistair Black on Raw over recent weeks and months it, 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 it's clear that Paul Heyman is a big fan of Alistair yeah. Black and they do seem to be putting him in more of a prominent role quite a um, quite a dominant role as well he certainly has had quite a good winning streak and um, put up against a, a reasonably credible opponent in Bobby Lashley here at Wrestlemania 36 um, but Alistair Black made his Wrestlemania debut in a tag match alongside Ricochet and I think it was possibly for the for the Smackdown or Raw tag team titles I can't remember which but um, that was a nice introduction but here he's got a bit more of a spotlight on him in a, in a featured match at WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, and I'm quite intrigued by this match, to be honest with you. Like I say, mostly because it's Alistair Black. Um, yeah. And I think he's got a really bright future ahead of him. And I think the company are getting behind him. And yeah. uh, secondly, because um, because it's Alistair Black, I've got no interest in Bobby Lashley, if I'm honest. But uh, what yeah. about yourself and how do you think this one might go down? <laughs> um, I'm mirroring exactly what you have just said. Um, one thing I did... When I first read it, and I have to be honest with you, I haven't really been keeping up with the shows. Um, but one of the one of the things that I it was quite jarring. I was like, I wouldn't have put Alistair Black against Bobby Lashley, but um, we will go with it because obviously he is on the main, you know, he's on the card, so that's happy. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get to the chase with it. I don't care what happens in the match as long as Alistair Black wins um I have loved him since I first saw him I didn't know him as Tommy End which I know might upset yeah. a couple of people but that that night in the U the second night of the UK championship tournament in 2017 when I yes. saw him I fell it's in level. love with him yes I fell mm, in love with him and back. I was like yeah. yeah so yeah that's it <laughs> Yeah, and I think that was that was a lot of people's first introduction to Alistair Black, or he was introduced as Tommy End uh, during that uh, kind of uh, middle of the card match. It was it wasn't a tournament match; it was a match against a pack called Neville, um, and he was billed as Tommy End. And they just signed him then, and obviously hadn't packaged him up as as Alistair Black. But I think besides the name, he's pretty much the same character, um, and uh, they haven't tried to doctor him too much at all, change his style or his look. So uh, that's really really good. Um, yeah. But I. I've got to, you know, just to cut to the chase, I'm going to go with Alistair Black as well. And I'm just really, really nice. pleased to see him in a, in a featured match, um, in a singles match at WrestleMania. And I want this to be quick. I want this to be a decisive win. Give him three or four minutes, black mass from out of nowhere, and yeah. one, two, three. And uh, like I say, they've been pushing him and pushing him and kind of building him up as this, uh, you know, uh, 
kind of next big thing you could say so I think it needs to be a dominant decisive win give him you know a three or four minute match nice and quick black mass over with and then move him on to bigger and better things and I want to see 12 months further on down the line WrestleMania 37 um, yeah. I, I want to see Alistair Black in a really prominent match a kind of a championship match because I think if they handle Alistair Black and develop his storylines and carefully handpick his opponents between now WrestleMania 37, I think you could be looking at Alistair Black in a, in a championship match, most definitely. But uh, yeah. that's kind of the upward trajectory that I'm hoping for anyway. So uh, Alistair Black, it is from both of us there. Let's talk about another championship match. And this one leads for the Raw Tag Team Champions. Now, this match has uh, kind of changed a little bit. I think uh, originally it was the Street Profits. I, I think that this was originally going to be a multi-team match, but uh, it's yes. kind of gone down to a team versus team just a straight tag match um which was originally billed as the street profit profits versus andrade and angel garza now i think originally um andrade and angel garza along with humberto carrillo and Rey mysterio were going to be involved in a four-way match for the u.s championship um yeah. As it turns out, Rey Mysterio had to drop out of WrestleMania because he contracted the virus. Uh, Humberto Carrillo is um, being uh, relegated to the reserves bench by the sounds of it. Uh, Andrade got injured in a match, not sure when or how, but he has since been replaced by Austin Theory, so NXT newcomer. Now, we've only seen him in a few matches on NXT, and I think every single match has been on the losing end, but we know that Austin Theory he looks great. Um, he's reasonably confident on the microphone. He's good in the ring. So he, he's pretty much the total package. I think he's only 22 years old. So the, the, the world is his oyster. And the future is very, very yeah. bright for Austin Theory. Teaming up with Angel Garza. We all love Angel Garza. Whether he's a heel, whether yeah. he's a baby face. He looks great. Good in the ring. Yeah. Um, and they're going to be accompanied uh, by Zelina Vega, of course. The Street Profits. Hell of a tag team. Uh, was yeah. a little bit uh, fearful for Montez Ford and that bump he took over the top rope on Monday when Austin Theory was meant to have uh, caught him on the outside and that didn't happen. And uh, that was a, a tremendous and very worrying bump. But um, yeah. I think this match has a lot of potential, to be honest with you. When you look at the individuals in the ring, yeah. You know, you've got Montez Ford who can uh, frog splash uh, for America um, any yeah. day of the week and uh, twice on Sundays. Uh, Angelo Dawkins, who's the powerhouse, and uh, yeah. he, he quite often gets the hot tag. And then, of course, you've got Theory and Angel Garza. So I think this could be quite a strong match uh, for the Raw Tag Team titles yeah. and uh, a hell of a WrestleMania debut for Austin Theory. But uh, give us your thoughts on this one. This could be quite an interesting match. Yes. Um, I have written some thoughts about it. Um, I personally would like to see the Street Profits win. I don't think it's time for their title reign to come to an end. Um, but you could add in the argument that if the, uh, Austin Theory and Angel Garza win, it strengthens Selena Vega's position because she will manage the Raw Tag Team Champions and she will manage the current uh us title uh us champ as well um which yeah. you know would be a really good thing to see portrayed um you know that it's not all just you know bringing it to the gender thing you know somebody you know the female that yeah. has the ambition to to want to be successful and stuff like that um she's great on the mic as well so um but yeah yeah Either way, I would be happy. I think there's going to be some crazy moves. Um, I was going to say the crowd are going to be amazing, but they're not even there. Um, <laughs> so, so it will be interesting to see how many red solo cups um, have been sold in, in sort of this area from Costco. Um, yeah. Every time I walk past, I want to grab one, but I can't. Because <laughs> they, like, they come in like bags of like 100 and they're massive so it's like I really want one um but yeah um I'm gonna say profits retain I think it's too soon for them to drop the titles they are very very much over they're entertaining as hell and there's nothing stopping Austin Theory and Angel Garza from going for them again um so yeah yeah, no, I, I, that's a good pick and a really good argument there. And I, I, I am inclined to agree with you as well. I think Austin Theory and Angel Garza, as good as 
individual wrestlers that they are. It's a bit of a makeshift team. Um, and I do always kind of have to question whether a makeshift team should kind of go over a more established team in such a, uh, an important match um, such as this at a WrestleMania. So I'd like to see the Street Profits win. Um, and I think if you remember back to when we first started seeing them on Raw, I think for months and months they were just there as some sort of backstage comedy act that was updating us on this show as it was progressing. It's great to see them in the ring, great to see them doing so well. And yeah. uh, of course, they're tag team champions. So I want to see them hold on to the belts for a little bit longer. That being said, um, I do, I am quite intrigued by your uh, kind of thoughts on if Theory and Gaza were to win, then Zelina Vega would be managing the US champion and the Raw tag team champions. And uh, once again, she's been doing a, an amazing job as a mm. manager. And yes. I've seen uh, quite a bit of kind of retro wrestling recently with WrestleMania 8 and WrestleMania 9 and various things. And I actually went back and I, 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 I specifically wanted to see the Sherry Martel Hall of Fame induction from 2006, I think it was, maybe 2007. Um, and, uh, you know, she was tremendous in that. And, you know, we lost another legend far, far too soon. But, yeah. um, uh, you know, when I listened to Bruce Pritchard's uh, podcast about Sherry Martel. So, you know, it brings it all back having this dominant female manager. Yeah. Um, and we don't have many managers full stop. You think of Paul Heyman and Selena Vega, and that's pretty much the only ones that come to mind, to be honest with you. So, yeah, I I'd be happy either way, much the same as yourself. Uh, yeah. But I would like the more established street profits uh, to, to win and to retain because I, have the I think they have been doing a great job so far. So let's have a look down the card then where are we so the smackdown tag team title so this is another match that could be entirely different once it hits our tv screens it's advertised at the moment as the miz and john morrison current tag team champions for smackdown against the new day that's biggie and king uh kofi kingston of course uh against the usos uh J jay and jimmy so if i can get my words out properly john but uh, this was originally <laughs> advertised as a triple threat ladder match for the smackdown yeah. tag team title so we know that WrestleMania has got a, a, a rich history of triple threat ladder matches. You think back to the original kind of three-way ladder match between the Dudleys, Edge and yeah. Christian and the Hardys, and then uh, TLC at SummerSlam that year and a TLC two at WrestleMania 17. Um, yeah. And, and uh, you know, this could potentially live up to those sort of standards, maybe not as uh, death defying as some of the things we saw during those three matches. Um, but I have heard that, because of Miz's, Miz's condition prior to WrestleMania and the whole reason why Roman Reigns isn't a part of the show, that the yeah. Miz was not part of this match, which then I think changed the match drastically. I understand that it's still for the SmackDown Tag Team titles, but it's going to be yeah. a three-way match, I understand, between John Morrison, one of the Usos, and Kofi Kingston in, yeah. in the ladder match at Although it's more of a singles match, it will still be with the tag team title suspended above the ring. Have you heard anything about this match in particular or, or what's your thoughts on what could go down during this match? I've heard the same thing as you, that it's going to be the tag titles will be defended by a member of each team. Um, now, that would be interesting. Um, and... I don't really know unless they could have found somebody else to take Miz's spot. Um, then, you know, it carries on as a, a, a six person. But um, I think we'll have new tag champs. And I think that this could play into a potential feud between Morrison and the Miz. I can see this going a variety of ways uh one of the things that i wrote was uh will xavier woods be back and help the new day um could they find somebody else to replace the miz um i know it's probably not likely given the fact that i don't think the entire roster was there no. um so um that's probably ruled that out it could be used as the basis for a feud between Morrison and the Miz when the Miz returns and is healthy um you know especially if he loses it and he's like you know yeah. I trusted you to to you know bring it home and you didn't kind of thing um I actually love all three teams um I do think how we've booked the raw tag titles 
I do think we will have a title change. I just can't decide who. I'd love to see the New Day back with them. Um, I just think they're fantastic. They're so entertaining. Um, and it would be interesting to see what would happen when Xavier Woods comes back. Um, I don't know how far away he is from coming back. Um, but it would be nice to have the New Day reign again, shall we say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've got uh, the same suspicions as you. I, I think there's going to be uh, a title change. Um, and I think it could, I, I think you've, you've, you've nailed it on the head there, it could be uh, possibly the, the, the pathway to a potential feud between The Miz and John Morrison. I think that uh, although they were previously a tag team when they first came onto the main roster, kind of early to mid 2000s, um, I, I did think that um, of the two, John Morrison has the greater potential. So I think they could really push him more as a single star. I thought putting him with the Miz in a tag team was a bit of an odd, odd, odd fit considering John Morrison has gone out and made a name for himself as a single star. But I think that's possibly the way they're heading. And if you think about 12 months ago, Kofi Kingston was on top of the world. He just won the WWF uh, title against Daniel Bryan in that epic yeah. match at WrestleMania 35. And yeah. um, it would be nice to see history repeats itself to a certain degree with Kofi lifting a championship, um, providing he's the other one of the New Day. Of course, we've got uh, Big E here. He could be the, the member of New Day used in this ladder match. Um, but uh, yeah. I'd like it to be Kofi. Um, but either either way, I think that um, the title, the change in, I think Morrison and Miz are losing their championship gold. Um, I don't think the Usos have done enough in my mind to become champions. So I think that just leads to one conclusion. And I think the New Day are winning. And I think it's going to be Kofi yeah. that's going going to be the one to grab the championships down from the rafters so that's going to be a really interesting one and with the added stipulation of it being a ladder match you've got the involvement of John Morrison we know what he's capable of kind of athleticism yeah. and gymnastics wise and all his parkour stuff uh, we know what Kofi yeah. Kingston's about all day long and, and the Usos uh, they're not afraid yeah. to um get involved with ladders and great heights. So I think that's going to be a real, I think that could be a sleeper match. I think that could be one of the matches we'll be talking about on uh, Monday morning, but uh, yeah, yeah, really, really interesting. So you're going for a title change. You're going for new day. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I, I'm inclined to agree. I'm going to go for the New Day as well. And uh, going back to the Raw titles, if, if we're predicting that the Street Profits are holding on to theirs, then I think there's going to be a title change for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. That tends to be, I don't know, the pattern. You kind of keep one and you lose one. But uh, yeah, I yeah. think the New Day are going to retain, are going to, going to win the Tag Team titles. And uh, yeah, good for them. Let's talk about one of the, the, the bigger matches on the card then. So we've talked about what could be considered more the undercard so far let's talk about one of the bigger matches and i'm talking edge versus randy orton so this is a match that's been built uh well we remember that epic return of course in january at the war rumble yeah. when edge made his uh, surprise entrance i think he was number 25 the crowd went ballistic um yeah and he had a fantastic showing in the Rumble there. He, I believe, if I remember rightly, he eliminated Randy Orton, which then led to a it little is, bit yeah. of a confrontation the following night on Raw. Yeah. And uh, Randy Orton uh, attacked Edge quite violently with some chairs. They've had a really good build-up with Beth Phoenix yeah. getting involved and various others. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the promo work, especially from Edge in the lead-up to this match, has been absolutely epic. And uh, yeah. this is best built match and the match that I'm most looking forward to out of all of them. I think it's going to be yeah. an absolutely cracking match and it's been built as a last man standing match, Lexi. So this is going to be yeah. a really good match. And uh, let's be honest, I think we're all excited for this one, but uh, how do you see this yeah. one going down? Like, it's a last man standing match. So potentially they could use the whole arena without fans getting in the way they could wrestle out in the, in the parking lot. Um, and I can, yeah. I can seriously see this one going all over the place. Yeah. I mean, depending on where it's located as well, just uh, going back to uh, Gargano and Champa's altercation from a couple of weeks ago on NXT, they went into the gym, mm. um, which was amazing. I loved that bit. So if they're at the performance centre, they could mirror the same sort of thing. Um, I have exactly the same thoughts as you. I think the build up has been excellent on this. You can tell that Paul Heyman has had his hands um on the storylines in terms of this yeah. um it's really reminded me of the early smackdown from sort of 2002 uh, 2003 2004 in the initial brand split yeah um 
and the type of storylines that you would see. I've written two things. Um, I've written that Edge has returned for a reason. And I hope that he will win to have his rest, another WrestleMania moment, irrespective of whether there's fans there or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. It would be fantastic to see him win. He looked so good. And that look on his face when he came out at the Royal Rumble, oh. I think you have to have a heart of stone to not yeah. be affected by it. Um you know, I don't think it'll affect Orton. Orton has proved that he can, you know, walk the walk, talk, talk and do all there is to do. But, yeah, and hopefully it paves the way for Edge to sort of come back on a part-time basis. Yeah, um, yeah. so there we go. I'm going with Edge for the win. Most definitely. I think it's got to be. Um, but. Yeah. You know, WWE like to swerve us and like to prolong storylines. If they know they've got something special, which they do here in this feud, they might yeah. try to get out a little bit. And I wouldn't blame them for, for doing that. So I say Paul Heyman, he's had his fingerprints over this from day one. You can tell with, with the promos, with the build, with the various yeah. uh, fringe uh, personalities that's been getting involved as well. Um, but yeah. um, I, I think because of how well this match has been built up, I wouldn't be disappointed whichever way it goes. Now, I know... You know, 99% of us are going to be rooting for Edge because it's been a real fairy tale return and uh, yeah. he's played his part brilliantly. Now, I think his time away and getting involved in acting has, you know, it, it, you know, it, it, if it is it, as if it was even possible in the first place, it's made Edge even better as a character and better as a promo guy on the microphone. And some of the promos, yeah. that, promos he's been delivering has been absolutely fantastic. And I don't think anybody's been involved in writing his scripts. They just sounded from the heart, very natural very raw, very real. Um, and uh, yeah. Randy Orton, to give him his credit, has definitely played his part uh, very, very well yeah. in this feud. So I, I got to say, um, you know, with the exception of maybe Drew versus Brock that we'll talk about a bit later, this is probably um, the match that I'm most looking forward to that's had the best build. And uh, I think yeah. it's going to be wild. And it's going to be really, really interesting to see what they get up to, where they fight, where they get into it, uh, what they use and how it ends. Um, but uh, I, I think, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to drag this feud out a little bit longer by giving them one more match, which would lead me to believe that Randy Orton wins. However, yes. my heart is saying give Edge the fairy tale return and the fairy tale yeah. win. But um, uh, did, did you give us a winner? I can't remember whether you did. Yeah, I said Edge. Um I'm going yeah. with my my heart over this. Um, like I said earlier when I shared that I was going to be on here, I'll probably get half of these predictions wrong anyway, so you can laugh <laughs> you know, when it goes out. But, yeah, um, yeah Edge. It's currently. Yeah, be. I think, yeah, that that's going to be the, the kind of the, the popular uh, vote is, is an edge win, but so we will see. And it's one of those, it's going to, you're going to be sitting on the edge of your seat watching that one, uh, whatever night that plays out, uh, WrestleMania Saturday or Sunday. But uh, yeah, that's that's the match as far as I'm concerned. But uh, another yeah. match that we're really looking forward to is Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. So these two yeah. have, seem to have been feuding for, for months and months and months, but uh, it's finally kind of coming together in a singles match at WrestleMania. Um, and uh, two very confident capable wrestlers performers entertainers um in, in the ring together and you've got the monday night messiah you've got uh, kevin owens um i think this could be another show stealer but um yeah. I, I, there's something about this match that's not quite clicking with me at the moment hopefully by the time it comes around to it i'll be kind of really looking forward to it i know they can both deliver in the ring mm -hmm. um but uh i know there's been lots of other parts kind of you know, a, a part of the storyline with the likes of Buddy Murphy and AOP and various others. So I'm expecting yeah. just to kind of add to the booking of the match, possibly other people to get involved, maybe to aid yeah. the Monday Night Messiah. But um, I don't know that this could be an interesting one. If they're able to have a good 15 minute match, then it could be another match that we'll be talking about over the water cooler on Monday morning. But uh, what about yourself? It's interesting that you've brought up. Um, uh, interference as far as i'm aware and you might know more than i do um one of the authors of pain is injured mm, that's correct and from what i read yesterday uh buddy murphy's out oh, and they okay. haven't disclosed why 
Now, I'm going off the assumption that both of those are correct, which means that Rollins only has one member of the authors of pain uh, to come in and, you know, shenanigans. Um, if that is the case, it would be interesting to see how they played that out whether they did get involved yeah. or whether they did a segment backstage where Rollins like, no, don't want you, you know, my team's depleted anyway, you stay back here, I can do it on my own kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, um, I would like to see Kevin Owens win. I think he's amazing. I think he's one of the, the most talented on the roster, both on the mic and in the ring as well. Um, but I think... Rollins is going to take it just to get more heat on him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you're absolutely spot on. I think that's the way it's going to go. That's the way that makes sense anyway. And you've got, you yeah. know, Rollins is the dastardly heel. Um, and I think he will win one way or another. And I think when you're a heel such as Seth Rollins, it doesn't matter how you win as long as you get that W. Um, but um, yeah. I think it's going to be a great match nonetheless. And uh, yeah, I, I, as much as I like both individuals and Kevin Owens, I think Seth Rollins is going to win that match. It just kind of makes sense. Yeah. It plays into the storyline very, very well. So moving on, let's talk about the SmackDown Women's Championship. So originally this was going to be a, um, a six-pack challenge, a fatal six-way. Now it's down to five individuals for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Originally Lacey Evans was one of the six, but now it's down to, uh, no, not Lacey, uh, Dana Brooke, my apologies. Yeah. Uh, but she's since um, had to be removed from the match because she is suffering with uh, symptoms of the virus. You've got Lacey Evans, Naomi, Sasha Banks and Tamina going up against Bailey in a five-way elimination match. So it is an elimination match. I like these elimination matches where it kind of whittles it down to yeah. the final two. And this one is for Bailey's championship, of course. So, uh, you know, there's a few names when you look at that, that, that kind of certainly Tamina, I don't really know what she's warranted to be involved in the match, to be honest with you. Um, um, yeah. I would I would have liked to have seen maybe the return of Nia Jax in this match, to be honest with you, and that would have been a more suitable person in there over Tamina. So there we go. Um, but I don't know. I, 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 earlier in the year, I thought they were building Lacey Evans to something special when I think that Lacey did have a couple of matches on pay-per-view against Bailey and ended up on the losing end. And I had a thought to myself, well, maybe they're saving Lacey Evans's big moment for WrestleMania. Um, it could be a big yeah. emotional moment with her daughter in the ring and, you know, the fans cheering yeah. and kind of the big payoff. Um, but uh, since Sasha Banks been involved and now she's part of this five-way match, I kind of think that they're building towards something between Bailey and Sasha Banks, which leads me to yeah. believe that Sasha Banks could come out uh, as the new champion after this match but uh, I wouldn't be disappointed if it's either Lacey or Sasha to be honest with you um, but I don't think Bailey is retaining I think that um, yeah I think that uh, they've done as much as they can with Bailey as the champion uh, but what about yourself? Well I one of the things I first wrote when I saw this match was could we have a call up from NXT um, to fill Dana Brooks spot um, especially because we know that at WrestleMania, WWE likes to shake things up, likes to keep surprises in. Um, and then I thought, well, what about Nia Jax? Just throwing it out there, she could come in and then it would play between the Bailey Banks teaming up and Tamina and Nia Jax. Um, it would be nice. And I know that you've just said that, you know, she hasn't really warranted it, but Tamina does need a a feel good moment I don't think she's had one during her career that's mm. memorable that I can think of um but I do think that it this match is going to focus on Bailey and Banks yeah um I think and um, without being disrespectful to any other of the competitors I think the way that it's been booked the fact that you've had kind of a ambiguity running through the friendship uh, especially you know since returning from banks um i think it it's building to the bigger better things i mean their last woman stand uh, sorry uh, iron woman match yeah. from one of the first takeovers uh, brooklyn i think it was 
was absolutely outstanding. Um, and if they can get that again, that would be great. I've actually said that Bailey will retain. Ooh, okay. I think it will come down to Bailey and Banks. And I think that there will be something that happens that will not only establish Bailey as the heel, um, finally showing that, you know, she shed her previous happy-go-lucky persona. And I think that it will build for Bailey versus Banks later down the line. Mm. Yeah, some interesting booking there. Some interesting booking. Um I haven't really considered Bailey actually retaining, to be honest with you. I I, I always thought this storyline was kind of always building towards a Sasha Banks victory and then the two of them feuding. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, there is a possibility for Bailey to retain. I mean, she's the longest reign in SmackDown Women's Champion in history. Um, yeah. So the company obviously have a lot of faith in her and to have her as the heel, I suppose, retain at WrestleMania uh, would kind of, add a bit more uh, credibility to her reign, I suppose. I mean, for me, I don't yeah. think Bailey's heel persona has really struck a chord at the moment, to be honest with you. I think, uh, uh, you know, they, they should really have done more when she was uh, the red hot or white hot baby face from NXT when she came upon to the yeah. roster. That, that, you know, fell flat on its face and the heel turn was much needed. But when you see what they did with the likes of Io Shirai in NXT with her heel turn, he was kind of hoping for that same sort of treatment for Bailey on the main roster, yeah. we haven't quite got that. We've kind of got, um, you know, Janice from accounts or the, the soccer mum baby, really, instead of the <laughs> the, the, the aggressive uh, psycho heel that we was hoping for. Um, but um, yeah. this could be quite an intriguing match, and the element of having a five way elimination rules yeah. i think it could be one of their matches that's kind of slipped under a lot of people's radar to be honest with you and like yeah. you say the door is wide open for lots of possible outcomes and lots of potential winners so i'm intrigued yeah. more intrigued than i was before we started talking about this match so uh that's another one that i can add to my list of matches that i'm quite looking forward to now um see i, I said it would happen didn't i i said it would happen yeah yeah <laughs> uh, but uh go on no, I was just going to say it's it's good, you know, and now that we're talking about it, I am starting to get um, more excited. Um, trying to pick a favourite match, though, is yeah. going to be difficult. Oh, but yeah. I think I'll have to see it before I go, that was match of the night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. So uh, winner-wise, um, who are you going for in this Fatal Five way? I... Did you say Bailey? Yeah, uh, but I've just looked at one of the other matches I've booked. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna stick with Bailey. Stick with Bailey. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Sasha Banks. I'm gonna go with Sasha Banks. I've just got a, an inkling. I've got a feeling um, that that Sasha Banks uh, wins the championship, and I think that sets up a nice little feud. And hopefully, we can see. You know, a little glimmer of what we saw between those two in NXT with their classic matches. Um, so uh, yeah. that that's my that's my take on it. So we're going to go from the SmackDown Women's Championship to the uh, to the NXT Women's Championship. So for the first time, an NXT Championship is going to be defended on a WrestleMania. And when we look at the card, it's, it's got uh, quite a lot of women's matches. Um, but uh, this one, yeah. um, obviously being promoted up onto the, the WrestleMania card from NXT. And of course, you've got uh, Rhea Ripley going up against Charlotte Flair. Now, Charlotte Flair won this year's Women's Royal Rumble. And she obviously had yeah. the choice of, uh, of the Raw Women's Champion, uh, Becky Lynch or Bayley on SmackDown. But she decided to yep. go for Rhea Ripley so that's been a nice change a nice turn of events uh, something quite fresh and different and exciting yep. and a, a fresh and new opponent for Charlotte Flair as well because I think we've seen her go through all the competition the entire women's roster on Raw and Smackdown twice over so it's nice to see yep. her go up against somebody different and a lot of people have compared Rhea Ripley to Charlotte Flair over the years yep. um, so I'm quite looking forward to this match um, now now yep. <sighs> I, 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 I'm not entirely sure how it's going to end. I'm a bit torn on this one because I think in theory, yeah. Charlotte Flair should win it because she's the best of the wrestler. But I think, would Charlotte Flair go to full sale every week and be a face on NXT? Um, or is she too big for NXT, leading me to believe that Rhea Ripley is going to win and retain somehow? So I'm a little bit yeah. torn 
or now i'm quite intrigued by this one the more i talk about it but it's definitely going to be an interesting match um but but what about yourself i have similar thoughts and i am possibly going to contradict one of the statements that i made in a, a grappuccino thoughts article picking up what you said about charlotte flair being uh on it on nxt and traveling to full sale you have to remember what's going on in her private life mm. and the fact that she hasn't kept it a secret that she's engaged to andrade yeah um you know would she be willing to be apart from um andrade unless you know they can find some way of either putting him back on nxt or or, or what um, I hope that this is given the main event slot that it deserves. Um, but my question is, does NXT really need Charlotte Flair? And I have to say no. Um, you know, you look at the talent that you have on NXT in the women's division. You've got Io Shirai. You've got, um, oh, uh, you've got Martinez, you've got uh, Candice LeRae, you've got Rhea Ripley, you've got Bianca Belair. Yeah, Tony Storm. Just, yeah, so so many. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've got Kaylee Lee Ray, who's mm. the NXT Women's Champion, uh, NXT UK Women's Champion, sorry. You've got Viper. You've yeah. got Ginny. <sighs> Do I think that... NXT really needs somebody like Charlotte Flair not at the moment um I have got Charlotte Flair to win um because obviously then Ripley can go on to the main roster and go from there but if Ripley does win what's next for her who is next for her um and I don't have the answer for that to be honest mm. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it would be great. I mean, you know, looking at the positives of things again, you know, if Charlotte Flair does go to NXT, she could bring in viewers from uh, Raw, SmackDown over to watch her, um, which could mean fresh eyes on a on a different product. And, you know, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm it's very, it's, very it's cool. an interesting one, and I like your kind of idea behind Charlotte Flair winning and going up on going over to NXT, bringing fresh eyeballs onto that product. And you know they are yeah. trying to build NXT as an equal of sorts to Raw and SmackDown, so I suppose that would make sense to a certain degree, I yes. suppose. Um, but going back to one of your other statements regarding her being in a you know relationship being engaged to Andrade and it would mean yeah. that their schedules would uh, conflict and that they wouldn't necessarily yeah. see much of each other and I think that Charlotte has done a lot of uh, politi uh, politicking behind the scenes to be on the same yeah. brand as Andrade from what I understand certainly the way it appears yeah. um I yeah I, I I'm gonna say here and now that I think Charlotte Flair is probably the best women's wrestler in the world at the moment and possibly yeah. one of the best wrestlers ever. I think she's a future yeah. Hall of Famer. Um, I Absolutely. think she deserves all of her championships that she's won. Uh, she's a, a yeah. wonderful, wonderful character. She looks great. She's brilliant in the ring. So I think she deserves yeah. all of the accolades. Um, but I am going to say that Rhea Ripley somehow manages to win you know, at WrestleMania yeah. over Charlotte Flair. Um, for all the reasons yeah. we spoke about, I think that Rhea Ripley has got, I think she's still got more competition on the NXT brand uh, to keep yeah. it fresh and exciting, in my opinion, um, yeah. people that she haven't faced yet. Um, but then it could shake things up if Charlotte won and uh, potentially Charlotte yeah. could win at WrestleMania and then Rhea Ripley could win it back the following night on Monday Night Raw. You never know. They could have some kind of storyline going yeah. there where it's a bit of a hot potato. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go for Rhea Ripley because it just makes sense with where everybody tends to perform on a regular basis to be honest with you and I think that they've invested yeah. a lot of time in Rhea Ripley especially that big championship win over Shayna Baszler in December yeah. and the crowd in the ring and that big emotional moment when they lifted her up on their shoulders and I think that that was only a, a few months ago when you think about it I think they need to capitalize on that 
wave of emotion and that momentum, certainly when you look back to, you know, war games and Survivor Series and then that championship win yeah. in December, um, I think that they could, there's a lot more they can do with Rhea Ripley on the NXT brand as the champion. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm going to go with Rhea Ripley. But I, I think... And I've done it to myself again. That was a match I wasn't necessarily hyped about, but I'm looking forward to it more now. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that could be a good one. That could be a really good one. So let's yeah. uh, let's let's talk about the Boneyard match then. So I think we spoke about it at the top of the show and the reasons yeah. why they're calling it the Boneyard match as opposed to a Buried Alive or a Graveyard match. The Undertaker, the American Badass, Mark Calloway, the Dead Man, whatever you want to call him, he's going to be there um, against AJ Styles. Now, AJ Styles has done a great great job in promoting this match he's been involved in undertaker's wife and some great promos and in real names mark calloway and and everything and really really kind of stirring up the emotions of uh of the dead man and the undertaker his promo monday night was just epic his promo was fantastic and um it was like the real Mark Calloway was, was there and he was angry and he was, you know, wanting blood, wanting revenge against AJ Styles. And I think yeah. we spoke about Edge and Randy Orton earlier in the build and the epic promos and, the you know, how it's really delivered before the two yeah. even face each other in the ring. And this one, much the same, has done, done, done again. And I'm intrigued by... Yes. what a boneyard match might entail and how mm-hmm. it might go and what they might utilize and uh, how it's going to end um, and i'm seriously yeah. excited for this one so uh, i have a funny feeling that not a funny feeling I, 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 i've got you know certain kind of feelings that the undertaker has a lot of respect for aj styles and much in the same sort of way that he wanted to put kurt angle over kurt angle was rumored to be one of the undertaker's opponents um and undertaker wanted kurt angle to beat him at a wrestlemania and to beat his undefeated wrestlemania streak that never happened they never had a wrestlemania match in the end uh, yeah. But I've heard that The Undertaker has similar feelings about AJ Styles as he does with uh, Kurt Angle and with Shawn Michaels. And we know what sort of respect The Undertaker has for those two individuals. I've got a feeling because of that respect for AJ Styles, I've got a feeling that he's going to put him over uh, WrestleMania. I think this yeah. could be another loss for The Undertaker. I, I do think Gallows and Andersons, uh, them arse clowns, as The Undertaker uh, <laughs> described them or, or whatever it was from Monday yeah. night's get involved um but uh, i'm very much intrigued by this and um i think my head my head is saying the undertaker but i would like to see uh aj styles win this one and i don't know how he's going to achieve it but i think somehow he will what about yourself i'm the same as you um i think um that it's been built fantastically and that promo that the undertaker did on monday was it gave me goosebumps and it was like I'd gone back to sort of the Ministry of Darkness Undertaker with his intensity and his, um, you know, I love the fact that when he was talking about Michelle McCool, he couldn't say her name. Um, and it, he kept say, you know, I, I mean, I know that he did say Michelle McCool, but he, he kept stopping and saying her um, so you can see that he's sort of really torn. Um, I really, really do think, and I'm going to put it out there, if this is Undertaker's last match and this is how it, he goes out, he's going to go out looking like a million dollars. He will put AJ over, um, which is, you know, passing the torch essentially. Yeah. Um, in a in a a match that's synonymous with him um and i would be happy i really would be happy because as much as i love the undertaker as much as i've followed his career i've cheered for him i've booed him i've cried when he left his hat and his coat in the ring and his gloves i think it's time I really, really do think it's time for him to to go. Um, that's not to say that I wouldn't love to see him as some sort of manager, um, you know, but I think AJ is going to win and I think it's going to lead to The Undertaker disappearing, possibly for good, um, as an active competitor. Yeah. 
Um, but one thing I will say is that AJ does the better Styles Clash. I'm sorry, but he does. We'll just leave that there. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. I did put that post out there on the Facebook uh, page the other day compared to Misha McCool's Styles Clash. I don't know what she called it back in the day and, and AJ Styles' like Styles Clash. Angels wings or yeah, something but, like uh, Angels wings, Yeah. They're both pretty sweet. They're both pretty sweet boos. But yeah. um, I think this would be a kind of a good swan song to The Undertaker's career. Um, going out to somebody that he truly respects and in a match that uh you know he, he's kind of synonymous with the undertaker but you think about yeah. kind of the timings and you know what happens nearly 30 years ago was the undertaker first came into the wwf at survivor series 1990 so potentially yeah. this could be taker's last match and potentially he could uh kind of you know bow out and wave goodbye um, on his 30th year anniversary with the company in October, November around Survivor Series time. So uh, yeah, yeah, maybe uh, a, a passing of the torch could point us in that direction, but uh, very, very interesting and definitely another one of their matches that I'm looking forward to. But uh, we've got a few yes. more matches uh, to touch upon. Now, yep. let's see, where are we? Uh, we're getting to the top of the card now. Let's talk about John Cena versus The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. This is advertised yep. um, as a Firefly Funhouse match. Now, before yep. this match was advertised as a Firefly Funhouse match, I kind of thought, well, you know, a, a singles match in the ring will be a bit boring, really. They could use maybe a Funhouse or, you know, with all the mirrors and uh, kind of things like that. But uh, Firefly, yep. Firefly Funhouse... I'm, I'm intrigued again as to what they're going to do. Are they going to enter? You know, um, you've got all these power, kind of different dimensions that Bray Wyatt's taken us to over the months, and uh, he's been with the company yeah. as the Fiends nearly one whole year. And uh, yeah, yeah it, we've seen the Muscle Man dance, so maybe we're going to get a bit yeah. inside of some sort of Muscle Man dance music dream sequence. Who knows? And then of course you've got the the Firefly Funhouse itself, and so many other things this this match could lend itself to. So it's very very intriguing. Yeah. Um, I think there's only one way that it can end, as far as I'm concerned. We obviously saw Bray Wyatt as part of the Wyatt family lose to John Cena six years ago at WrestleMania 30. And um, that was kind of the, the start of the downward slope for Bray Wyatt, although he was always very, very popular and had big WrestleMania matches against the likes of The Undertaker, Cena, Randy Orton. Uh, he was always positioned yeah. on top in that sense. He always lost. So I think this is his opportunity yeah. to not only get his win back, but to have a little bit of a WrestleMania shine and WrestleMania victory for a change. And um, I yeah. think that after having lost the championship to Goldberg in Saudi Arabia yeah. a couple of months ago, this is WWE's way of repaying the fiend, repaying Bray Wyatt for all of his hard work, all the money that he's yeah. made them with uh, uh, the, the fiend's character. Um, and yeah. uh, I think that it's got to be a Bray Wyatt. It's got to be the fiend that wins um, yeah. over the weekend against John Cena. And um, uh, what yeah. do you think about this one? I'm exactly the same as you, but I'm going to take it further. I want this match to be absolutely batshit insane. I want, like, you know the the Randy Orton match that he had a couple of years ago at WrestleMania where they projected, like, maggots and stuff onto the ring? Oh, yeah. I want, I want that to be a reality. I don't want to see projection of maggots. I want to see, like, you know... Actual listen, maggots. If, actual worms. Actual maggots. <laughs> if, we, if we had to endure... Roman Reigns being fed dog food or whatever it was on SmackDown, I'm pretty certain that they can do it for real. Like, I just want, I, I just want it to be, you know, full on balls to the wall. Yeah. Absolutely insane. Something that you're going to talk about for better, for worse, for the rest of, you know, for the rest of time. You know, think Undertaker and his lightning bolt. Think Undertaker pouring concrete onto Paul Bearer. I just want it to be a fantastic match. Um, and as much as I love John Cena, um, I think he's going to have to. I think he's going to have to lose. Um, what I would like to see, though, is the Doctor back again. Can we make that an annual thing, please? I want the Doctor of neat. Economics back. Yeah, that would be um, neat. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's my that's my thoughts and feelings on it. The crazier, the better. Make the most of not having an audience. Make the most of being able to stop and 
change sets and stuff like that and yeah. change the lighting and yeah just yeah take i think it's gonna be it. the, probably the most fun match on the card uh with yeah. the possibilities with what they could put together and when you've got the crazy mind of bray wyatt you know it, for crying yeah. out loud you know look at what he's come up with in the last year or so with the firefly fun house and the fiend and yeah. i'm sure he's come up with some pretty weird wacky and imaginative uh kind of scenarios for this match against john cena and i'm sure john cena was kind of you know happy to do whatever bray wanted i'm sure bray was probably the the, the, the brainchild behind everything that we see between those two at wrestlemania yeah. uh yeah much the same as you really i i i think it's going to be really really fun balls to the wall wacky match and um yeah especially when they've had time to maybe film different scenes and edit all, edit it all together um, into almost like a, a crazy kind of slasher movie. It could be really between these two. Oh, yeah. um, it, it, it could be a really, really crazy kind of horror movie um, with, yeah, uh, yeah let, let's get the maggots out. Let's get the, let's get the worms out. Let's get the, the giant wacky mallets who cares um yeah. but uh, this is a real opportunity for them to have really really good fun and it could be yeah. it, it could be terrible <laughs> but at the same time it could be really really okay. good uh, but yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. you know let's go further let's go even further and let's go papa shango versus the ultimate warrior where he made the green <laughs> stuff come out of his head and like i absolutely lost it because i genuinely thought he was dying you know what i mean <laughs> you know let let's go there let's yeah. go there you know it's gonna be fun biggest night. you know it's the biggest night they're advertising it as too big for one night let's do it let's give him you know give him 45 minutes just go go nuts do you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. You know, i mean so another the- match that we can compare this match to um uh, if you think back, I can't remember which WrestleMania it was now, maybe WrestleMania 13, 14, Goldust versus Roddy Piper, the backlot brawl, and what they did there and what yes. they were able to stitch together. And that was pretty crazy. And uh, this one will even be yeah. wilder and wackier. But uh, that just goes to show that when you give wrestlers free reign to kind of knock lumps out of one another and get gold limousines involved and uh, all sorts of shenanigans that yeah. uh, it can turn into a legendary match that we're still talking about 20 30 years later but um there we go that's gonna be a good one i think we're both going for the fiend win there and he needs to get his win back yeah. uh, from the loss from six years ago so yeah. Let's have a look then. Uh, Goldberg versus mystery opponent. We we spoke earlier about uh, Roman Reigns not being involved. We are yeah. reasonably assured that Braun Strowman will be Goldberg's partner. Braun Strowman is not featured in any of the matches. Uh, recently yeah. lost the Intercontinental Championship. And uh, he's yeah. had so many chances at the WWE or Universal title in the past, mostly when Brock Lesnar has been champion. So Brock Lesnar was uh, kind of... Uh, Braun Strowman's uh, nemesis is a uh, poison chalice that you just can't get beyond. Um, but uh, okay. I was mildly looking forward to Roman Reigns versus Goldberg, Spear versus Spear. Um, but yeah. uh, Braun Strowman, it's a bit of a step down as far as I'm concerned, but still be interesting to see what they do with this. One thing I don't want, I don't want it to be a long match. I think it needs to be a short match, yeah. especially with these two yeah. individuals involved. Uh, make it short, make it impactful. If you think back to Goldberg's match against Brock Lesnar from a few years ago at WrestleMania, that was a really it was a five minute match uh, but it was awesome for what it was it was just move after move impactful five minutes and it was done uh, let's have a similar yep. match here please um You've got to think, yeah. you know, who who might win? You know, Braun Strowman is, is the regular. We're going to see Braun Strowman on the TV every single week compared to Goldberg, yeah. who we might only see once a month potentially. So do you want the title yeah. to be on another part-time champion or somebody that's going to be there every week? And I kind of yeah. got the feeling that after all of the opportunities they've given Braun Strowman, this might be the final opportunity yeah. um and let's do it on a, on a big stage let's do it on a wrestlemania so i'm going to go for braun Strowman for that kind of yeah. deserved feel good factor let's give him the title that he should have won a while ago sort of thing uh, but what about yourself i'm with you um i will go into teacher mode and be like let this be a lesson to you wwe this is why you do not give brock lesnar the money in the bank briefcase because if nobody you know if somebody else would have won money in the bank and hadn't have cashed it in, boom, you could have set it up. Yeah. Um, so always have that contingency plan. Don't cash in money in the bank too early, lads. Um, I would like to see Strowman win. Um, and spoiler, spoiler alert for the McIntyre-Lesnar match, um, I'd like to see 
a WrestleMania 21 finish to the card where you've got uh, a new champion on Raw, new champion on SmackDown, taking it through um, to the next phase of storylines. Yeah. Um, however, can I have it where we have a Matt Riddle running, please? And Matt <laughs> Riddle just absolutely destroys it. Because that um, is something I want to see. As much as I love the the bros awaits, I really need to see Matt Riddle versus Goldberg. I'm sorry, I do. Um, yeah. It's, it's got to be a SummerSlam. It's got to be a match in SummerSlam. Yeah. You know, it's a match that I bloody well deserve for all the, the times I've sat with my head in my hands, watching through my fingers going, please don't win the title. Oh, he's, he's won. See you later. I'm out. Kind of yeah. thing. Um, however, 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 um, it would be interesting if they did a finish to the card like they did with 21. I've heard, and I don't know whether you've heard this or not, the state of Florida have now issued a stay at home order, yeah. which means that WWE don't have a SmackDown for next week. So they may have to have an enforced break for the rest of April. And I think it would be quite nice if you if they came back with fresh content, with fresh champions. Hmm. Yeah. So really I don't. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether you've heard that. That's one of the things that I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know the the source that I have. I think it's something like Wrestle Quotes or Wrestle. Uh, I'm sure yeah. it's Wrestle Quotes on Twitter. They're usually pretty spot on. Um, you know, and it would just be interesting to pick it up where they left off yeah. with new yeah. faces. Um, so yeah. There we go. I think we're um, uh, both going for Braun in that one. Is that correct? Yes, please. Well, there we go. And I think it's uh, long overdue. But if they, I mean, this is going to be what his fourth, fifth, sixth attempt at uh, a world title universal championship. And if they don't deliver on this one, then they might as well just, you know, I don't know, send, send, send the guy packing. But, um, yeah. uh, but but yes, this is, you know, got to be done this time around. Um, yeah. Careful, though, talk- because you'll, Go on. careful, though, because you'll, you'll start Strowman as AEW rumours. Come on now, be careful. Wow. This is it. We don't we don't want to send him packing uh, to AEW yet, but uh, there we go. Um, so what we got left on the card to talk about? Let's have a little look at Becky Lynch and Shayna Baszler. So another match that's been built fairly well. Some some good promo work from both. Um, I, I didn't really kind of understand why they did the whole vampire biting of the neck thing when uh, Shayna kind yeah. of burst onto the scenes um, kind of all them weeks ago. But uh, they have used and booked Shayna Baszler very well of course she uh, won the TLC match at the end of uh, 2019 she had a very very strong showing at the Royal Rumble and of course she uh, dominated um, and uh, obliterated her opponents at the Elimination Chamber so they really have kind of pushed Shayna Baszler as this kind of monster heel um, and uh, yeah, in the absence of Ronda Rousey, I suppose Shayna Baszler is that legitimate fighter that you know yeah. is is a credible threat to Becky's championship. And of course, Becky's been Raw uh, Women's Champion now for one whole year. She was uh, Becky two bouts after WrestleMania 35 last year. Hell of an occasion yes, that one. Was, yeah. um, but um, you know, Becky's uh, heat has gone a little bit off the boil in that 12 months. But um, you know, WrestleMania mm-hmm. season is the season where it's the time when she thrives. It's the time when she's you know really kind of in her element you could say so I think this could be a really good match you've got two very good wrestlers um two very good characters but you know which way are they going to go I mean Shayna has always been billed as the dominant monster heel that can you know you've got a tap snap or um crack I think it is but uh she she, she's got a kind of food a clutch that she loves to utilize Becky's got her disarmor um so it could be a match of the submission hold you never know but um 
I, I, I think the way they've been building Shayna, um, I think the title is going to change over the weekend at WrestleMania. And I think we're going to have a new Raw Women's Champion um, in the shape of Shayna Baszler. But uh, what about yourself? I'm the opposite. Um, I would like Becky Lynch to retain um, just because she's not quite at the year mark um, for a title reign. If she defends on Saturday... She is at 362 days. Right. And if she defends on the Sunday, she's at 363. She's currently the longest reigning Raw Women's Champion. I'd like to see her get to a year, um, selfishly, because I really, really like her. I always have. Yeah. Um, I worry that putting the title on Baszler at this moment in time is too much too soon. Um, and when we've seen her in NXT, there has been little things that I've sort of been like, you know, still needs to learn certain aspects of it. And that's no disrespect to her. You know, I think she's a hell of an athlete and, you know, I just don't think it's the right time because it poses questions. Are they going to bring the other horsewomen up from NXT? Um, possibly to help, possibly to get involved. But if Lynch does retain, who's going to take that title? And um, of course, if that is the case, and I uh, and Lynch does retain, it could be that Nia Jax comes in and they have a feud and and go from there. Um, Because we know that Nia Jax is coming back. So obviously you've got to think about how they'll they'll try and put that in if she has returned. Um, And also as well, we've got to bear in mind the opinion of Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon is not particularly keen on Shayna Baszler by all reports. Sure. I could be completely wrong on that. Um, He may not want to. Um, You know... um, but yeah, yeah, I've got Becky Lynch to retain. Um, hopefully, I've written in brackets. Yeah, <laughs> you, you've got a good point. I mean, I, I think regarding your Vince McMahon comment, I think you are hitting onto something there because although they've made Shayna Baszler look very dominant in NXT and on the main roster, and like I said, at the, the TLC match to close out last year, um, a very dominant showing at this year's Rumble and then the Elimination Chamber, of course. Um, but the, the, the kind of the crowd reaction and the fan reaction to their moments for Shayna has been quite tepid, to be honest with you. So I think that yeah. Vince McMahon kind of goes with his goes with his ears sometimes, goes with his gut instincts, and if they're not clicking with the fans or getting over in the way that he wants, then you know sometimes he'll pull the rug from underneath them. And although yeah. they have shown a lot of faith in Shayna Baszler and what she's done so far, I do think that Vince McMahon's gut instinct is that she's not getting over as a heel as much as the opportunities they're giving them are given to her. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me if, if they do keep the belt on Becky because of that initial kind of response and reaction that, that Shane is getting with the audience, with the fans that don't know her so well, or, you know, maybe they're just not promoting her in the right, right way. It's a different audience we know yeah. to the NXT audience. Um, but then yeah. I want to throw out a little name and uh, see, see your reaction here. Now we haven't seen this individual sure. for nearly a year, but I'm wondering is WrestleMania a good opportunity, whether we've got fans or no fans, to maybe reintroduce Shayna Baszler, uh, uh, Ronda Rousey, my apologies, Ronda Rousey, and could Ronda make make an appearance at WrestleMania to possibly stand at ringside, get involved? You know, you've got to think that, that Becky and Ronda still have that kind of unresolved rivalry yeah. that never really you know you had that pinfall at wrestlemania but was it a pinfall was it not it, it wasn't that yeah. kind of one-on-one singles match that we were all kind of wanting for a wrestlemania yeah. um so you know there's still that kind of them loose threads between uh becky and ronda um now everything's been quite quiet on the ronda rousey front for quite a while now a lot of people are thinking she's you know retired fed up with mm-hmm. not fed up with resting but not planning to return anytime soon planning to maybe start a family who knows um but uh there could be that little that little curveball that little swerve um by the name yeah. of ronda rousey it's funny it's really really funny and you mentioned before that we were having uh technical difficulties when 
we had sort of a, a break in between calls to try and resolve it, I actually looked at Ronda Rousey's Instagram page and literally two days ago, she answered some questions in a video and the very first one was when are you coming back and she (laughs) straight to camera looks and says I'm still planning on becoming a mum now I'll leave that open to interpretation (laughs) that you know she's either being an absolute fantastic actress um but one thing I did notice um I mean, it would make sense to have Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler in WWE. But one thing I noticed from the Elimination Chamber of Pay-Per-View, which upset me, was the lack of interaction between Baszler and Asuka. Yeah. And I'm thinking if Baszler was to get the title at some point those two are going to go at it because I would love to see the unstoppable asker of NXT and you know her undefeated streak etc etc I would love to see that version of Asuka go against Shayna Baszler and then I think it would be credible for her to lose because without it apart from Ronda Rousey and Asuka I can't think of anyone that is legit enough maybe Sonia Deville but she's on the wrong brand um that could take that title from her mm. yeah it's it's kind of um I think just by talking about it we've kind of opened up a, a couple of other possibilities there but uh, it's funny that you mentioned about Ronda Rousey's Instagram message I wasn't aware of that but uh, I yeah. am a, I am a big fan of Ronda Rousey and I'm always kind of looking for these opportunities where she might come back and you know uh, yeah. WrestleMania there's no bigger occasion whether you've got fans or no fans and there's no bigger yeah. occasion to kind of uh, reignite the flames of what was an amazing feud uh, back end of 2018 going into 2019 leading into their WrestleMania match I thought the Mania match was, yeah. was good um, and uh, but I, I think a one-on-one match between Becky and Ronda somewhere down the line will be even better um, I don't know I, I'm, I'm torn um, yeah I think for so many reasons I could choose Becky and then for so many other reasons I could choose Shayna. I've got to go with what I've witnessed and that is that they have pushed Shayna as the dominant heel, um, the dominant monster and she really has been kind of champions to close pay-per-views. I mean that's pretty yeah. special that really is pretty special so i've got a feeling that with all the stock they've invested in Shayna baszler that Shayna baszler is going to be the raw women's champion uh at the end of wrestlemania 36 so final match then lexi final match <laughs> i've been saving yeah. this one to last uh brock lesnar brock lesnar against drew mcintyre this is the match i really wanted to talk about drew i think you know it, it's it's You couldn't have scripted it any better, to be honest with you. When you look at the Drew McIntyre we had in the WWF 10 years ago, and then he was turned into a comedy performer as part of 3MB, as entertaining as they were. And then he he left, he found himself, he broke down barriers and, and won championships all over the world, whether it's in the UK, across Europe, in the States. Came back, won the NXT championship, was away a little while because he got injured, got brought up onto the main roster. He looks like a beast. He talks, yeah. you know, so eloquently and he's brilliant on the microphone. He's so charismatic. Um, I think the Claymore kick is possibly the best move in WWE at the moment. He's showing at the Royal Rumble this year um, is probably as good, you know, a, a Royal Rumble yeah. uh, appearance you could, you could kind of put on anybody in the last 20 years. And the way that Brock Lesnar sold for Drew McIntyre at the Royal Rumble and the way that he sold for Drew McIntyre on subsequent episodes of Monday Night Raw, this has been a fantastic build. And they've really, really kind of positioned Drew McIntyre as, you know, a, a credible force to be reckoned with contender for the WWE title. He's yeah. been positioned as somebody on the same level as Brock Lesnar as well, which is quite interesting. And somebody that Brock Lesnar is quite intimidated by as well. Um, And I think this could be 
a really hard hitting, dramatic, exciting match uh, come. I, I think this is going to close night two. I think this is going to be the main event of main events. I think this is going to close night two. Um, yeah. I, I really want them to follow through and give Drew McIntyre his moments. The only slight kind of twisting of the, you know, the gut is the fact that there's going to be no fans to witness Drew McIntyre's crowning moment, which he so yeah. deserves when you consider everything that I've just said about him. Yeah. Uh, then that kind of makes me think, well, let's give him an audience and let's do it at SummerSlam. So let's have a rematch in, you know, a few months time. But then we don't know if we're going to have yeah. a SummerSlam. So let's give yeah. him a title at WrestleMania. So I think it's yeah. going to be Drew McIntyre. Um, Drew McIntyre, I, I, I'm just so excited and so happy for what they've done with Drew and for what Drew has been able to, you know, he's, he's clawed his way back into this position. You know, WWE has nothing yeah. to do with this. This is this is guts. This is yeah. aspiration. This is a want and a will and a desire to be better and to be the best. And he yeah. has got nobody else to thank for this apart from himself. And I really yeah. want them to follow through, give Drew his Daniel Bryan moment from WrestleMania yeah. 30 and put the put the title on Drew McIntyre here on Sunday night yeah. over Brock Lesnar. But what about yourself? Um, I mentioned before, um, I want a WrestleMania 21 finish. I want two brand new champions um, to to go for forward uh, and take the company forward. Um I will be annoyed if it's a squash match because I think that it deserves to be not a, oh God, not a a long match, but it deserves to have a good chunk of time. Mm. Um, and can you imagine the scenes? Did you, did you see the reaction in his local pub from uh, his, his hometown when he won the Royal Rumble? Yeah. in the pub uh, that again just that moment they might not be physically there but watching it in real time the scenes would be absolutely unreal it would be fitting that we had the first ever british born WWE champion crowned at, in the same year that um the british bulldog goes into the hall of fame yeah. that would be quite nice um, it would certainly keep us Brits somewhat happy, <laughs> um, you know. But yeah, I'm really, really hoping that it it happens. You know, WWE dropped the ball years ago with uh, Bad News Barrett, Wade Barrett. Yes. Um, you know, but I think going through everything that McIntyre has gone through, I think. If the Drew McIntyre of 10 years ago had been given this opportunity, he would have wasted it. Yeah. And now he's gone, he's paid his dues, he's realised that he was given so much so soon. And now he's like, I cannot lose it. I have to make the most of it, um, which makes it even even sweeter if he does it. Um it will be interesting to see whether Paul Heyman plays a role. Um, as we know, Paul Heyman is the advocate um, for the reigning, defending, undefeated um, WWE champion. Um, but yeah, I, I think it can only go one way, especially with the world being as is at the moment. Brock will probably want to go to his farm. I heard rumours that he lives in Canada now. Um, yeah, Saskatoon. Yeah. Yeah. So if he lives in Canada and it's still quite strict on travel and movement, I think he's going to want to go home. I can't blame him, to be honest. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think we've got to think long term. And one of my gripes with WWE at the moment is that we don't see the major titles on a regular basis. And I think putting it on a full-time member of the roster is the way to go. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Couldn't agree anymore. Couldn't agree anymore. And um, 
yeah, I'll be absolutely made up for Drew um, if he yeah. does manage to retain. I think it'll be a really good way to end WrestleMania as well. Give it the, the main yeah. event spot on, on night number two and to have that kind of really, you know, when, when the world is feeling shit at the moment and we're all kind of impacted yeah. one way or another, whether it's little or large by the coronavirus, you know, let's go out on a high. Let's, you know, end on a really happy note and I think that Drew yeah. winning the title is a really happy note. Now, bear in mind that this was filmed over a week ago. I did hear that, mm-hmm. that Brock Lesnar um, was not a happy bunny during those tapings. And they had a confrontation. Vince McMahon stormed into the office when a big meeting was happening because um, yeah. they had a strict schedule of matches they wanted to keep to, that they wanted to film in a particular order. Brock was positioned to have his match filmed at a certain time slot, possibly the last match or one of the last matches to be recorded, to be taped. Um, and Brock just wanted to get home. You mentioned that he lives in uh, in Canada, in Saskatoon, and just wanted to have his match done and so he could get out of there because he didn't want to be around people, I'm guessing. He's not a very sociable person at the best of times. Um, yeah. So I don't know whether that played into the match and how the match played out but I'm only hoping that Brock did the right thing and uh, put over Drew McIntyre the way he's been putting him over all these weeks since the War Rumble which uh, you know I, I'm a big advocate of Brock Lesnar. I'm not his manager advocate. I'm not Paul Heyman, but I am an advocate of Brock Lesnar. Um, and I'll, yeah. I'll say till the cows come home that he's one of the, the best workers and best sellers in the business. And he has done, certainly done that for Drew McIntyre. So let's hope that WWE, Vince McMahon and Brock Lesnar did the right thing. And they gave, they give the fans what they want. And that's a Drew McIntyre win to close out the show. And I think that Drew McIntyre deserves no less. And like I said, the only slight sour, um, thing is that there'll be no fans to witness it but um let him have a, another big moment at SummerSlam and he can have a rematch against Brock then and, and retain yeah. in front of 20,000 people but uh, yeah Lexi we've just spoke for an hour and a half there I'd say on the 16 matches and it's a hell of a card and now yes. are, are you a little bit more excited for WrestleMania now that we've gone through all of that I think I am yeah it's just sort of hit me that Oh my God, we are at WrestleMania weekend. We are, we are. And it's like, oh my God. So now I'm going to have to have the conversation of, right, are we having snacks or not? Because then I'll have to bake because that's what I do at WrestleMania. You've got to have snacks. It's a tradition. It's a tradition. (laughs) Speaking Um, of traditions, what do you have a particular go-to snack and i'll tell you what mine is in a minute because it's the same every year it's like when i have chinese it's got to be the same chinese but when it comes to wrestlemania i have a strict routine as far as what snacks i have but uh, what about yourself um it varies um i'll be honest um when i was younger and a little bit thinner um a lot thinner um it was whatever i could get my hands on and whatever would keep me going you know I'd probably have a a few alcoholic beverages during the time and and go from there but as I've gotten um older um I do what I call graps and wraps so I have fajitas essentially while I'm watching because they're quick to do and it 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 rolls off the tongue quite nicely graps and wraps um and then is it's always something baked afterwards for the next course so at the moment um snickerdoodles are a favorite but i'm gutted because they don't actually have snickers in them i am gutted (laughs) at that um yeah they're they're like shortbread that's rolled in cinnamon and sugar so they'll probably get done and then i don't know i might make some flapjacks this year I need to come and watch WrestleMania over at yours. It sounds like you, uh, you, you, you have all the, the lovely uh, snacks there. But uh, for myself, I always have a nice pizza in front of me, Lexi. But I always yes. have. And it's a, a strange one. I always have a nice bowl of profiteroles and double cream for afters oh. while I'm watching WrestleMania. So uh, pizza and profiteroles every year without fail. And, um, I like uh, it. Yeah. That keeps me going. That keeps me going. But there we go. Um, well, one other thing that I think has just recently been announced, um, but there's going to be um, a special WrestleMania in. Uh, uh, appearance of or, or reappearance of the, the the peep show christian's talk show he's going to have yes. um, the, the peep show at wrestlemania with um his guest on the show none other than hulk 
Hogan will be on the Peep Show at WrestleMania. So that'll be, you know, quite interesting and could develop into some kind of angle. Maybe somebody will come down, who knows? But uh, always good to see Christian um, and uh, at a WrestleMania. And let, let, let's, you know, hopefully while they're there, maybe talking about a, a future Hall of Fame induction for Christian, definitely deserve it there. But um, yeah. uh, always entertaining when you've got the Hulkster on TV. You never quite know what he's, he's going to say. And uh, much like Ric Flair, whenever Ric Flair's got a microphone, you never quite know uh, what's going to come out of his mouth either. But um, it, it's, it's yeah. looking like a pretty good card. And I think um, they've had time yeah. to edit the matches or put them in a particular order to make it the best possible TV show, the best possible product they can on both nights. And uh, the location matches are the matches I'm particularly looking forward to. Um, really looking yeah. forward to, you know, some of the key matches, some of the top championship matches that we've spoken about. But uh, is, it, is it kind of one match that, that really stands out that you're really looking forward to the most? Um You've put me on the spot now. Let, let me um, ask it in a slightly different way then, because uh, Mags, yeah. um, who's a regular on the Wrestling with John's podcast, did actually send us a question through Twitter asking which match do you think will be uh, best in terms of in-ring action? So which do you think will be kind of deliver in terms of the star ratings or the one that we're all going to be kind of, uh, you know, picking our chins up off the floor um, because of uh, what went down in a particular match? I think it's going to have to be Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryan, to be fair. Um, just going by previous or things that I've seen previous yeah. from them, whenever it, it comes to that big match show, that big event feel, I think they always do something to make it above and beyond and stand out. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Um, yeah. the, the other one could be Edge versus Orton. Um, yeah. And the last man standing match but i think that's more from my heart than my brain yeah. so yeah yeah um some good choices there uh for myself uh yeah I, I i i'm really looking forward to undertaker versus aj styles and seeing what they get up to there um as we know aj styles is going to bump all over the place with the undertaker but i i got a feeling that uh with that uh, respect factor there that the undertaker could be putting aj styles over um but i'm or, or well I've, I've just kind of waxed the lyrical about um drew mcintyre and brock lesnar i think that's gonna be a wonderful match and i think it will be a main event that will not disappoint uh, we've had a few main uh, wrestlemania main events over recent years that have disappointed i think this one if it goes on last will definitely um not disappoint but uh, Lexi, that's pretty much it uh, from this episode 118 of the Wrestling With Jobs podcast. We've covered all 16 matches uh, that's penciled in for WrestleMania 36, but it could all look different when we come to see it uh, when it airs on the WWE Network on Saturday and Sunday night because things might have changed. People might be involved or not involved, as the case might be. Uh, compared to what's on paper at the moment but uh, listen I want to thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for being a wonderful okay. guest I always love having you on yeah. Wrestling John podcast you are a, a really really great guest and uh, uh, just to let people know that you've recently written a new article to go on the website and I do have it here it is uh, okay. if I can be just for a minute so that will be yep. dropping on wrestlingwithjohnnes.com very very soon um but to uh, your sense. article before that uh, 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 uh this time an extra large shot um that one yeah. is available for people to read along with all of your other reports and uh, articles on wrestlingwithjohnnes.com but uh, i want to thank you for being an excellent contributor to the website and a really really good thank guest uh, on, on the podcast and we can't wait to have you on again sometime in the future Oh, fabulous. I'd love to come back. Thank you. No, you're very, very welcome. And uh, there we go. So that pretty much wraps up uh, day three of five podcasts, five days, five podcasts uh, from the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. Now, we do have two more podcasts coming up very, very soon to complete the, the fourth and fifth day of five. As I've just mentioned, day four, we will be covering day one of WrestleMania 36 with Kurt Johansson from Ringsiders Pod and Kurt's Angles podcast. Uh, so Kurt, uh, Kurt's 
Johansson, who's been on the podcast many times before, will be back with us to review day one of WrestleMania 36. And then day two will be covered by uh, Matt Bayliss and uh, Grizz and myself. So it'll be a three-man booth to cover day two of WrestleMania 36. And that will be dropping on Monday because uh, Kurt Johansson episode will be dropping on Sunday and day two of WrestleMania 36 will be dropping on the Monday. So five days, five podcasts. Um, I think I'll have a, a well earned uh, rest and a glass of uh, wine or beer or something, whatever whatever I can get my hands on um, after those uh, uh, final couple of podcast drops. But uh, thanks again to Lexi for being a wonderful guest uh, on this uh, week's episode of the Wrestling with Johnners podcast. Please keep it tuned to the Wrestling with Johnners podcast. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, please don't forget to press that ever important subscribe button so you're notified every time a new episode drops. Uh, thanks again to Lexi. Thanks again to everybody for listening. We'll catch up with you all again soon. Thank you.